dear friends, brothers and sisters in Christ, today's gospel reflection is taken from the gospel of Matthew chapter 11, verses 28 to 30. And the Lord says, Come to me, all of you who are weary and overburdened. Learn from me, for I am gentle and humble of heart, and you will find rest. Take my yoke. Learn from me, and you find rest. My dear brothers and sisters, in life, life can choose to be very tough, very burdensome, very painful. It can break us down. The Lord says, yes, in our painfulness, in our brokenness, in our tiredness. You know, we can be tired. One can be tired only because he's working. First of all, the Lord invites us to work, 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 but also to rest. To work, work. So he says that as we continue working, because working is a blessing from the Lord. It's the Lord who grants us everything that is around us and he invites us to take good care of it. As we continue working every day in the family, at work, wherever we are, the life can become heavy. As we continue doing that beautiful, good thing to work, life can become heavy. We may become weary. We may be broken. We may be in crisis even as we are working. It may be painful. It may be challenging. We may be broken hearted as we are working. Maybe because of the situation. Maybe because of the conditions. And the, but the Lord in all these painful realities says, Come to me, all of you who labor. First of all, those who work. <laughs> we have to continue working. So he says, those of you who labor and are overburdened, are weary, are stressed, come to me. My brother, my sister, when we are working and things are not going on well, where do we go to? Do we run immediately to ourselves and hide inside and we don't even reveal to anyone? Do we run to others who are even also fragile? We run immediately to them. The Lord, first of all, says, run to him. Tell him when things are going on well and he will enlighten us and strengthen us and encourage us to continue doing well. Tell him when things are not going on well and he will teach us how to make them go well. Run to the Lord first and then from there we will run to others for help because the Lord is working through others. From there we will run to ourselves. Because there are things we must work out ourselves from inside to see what was right, to evaluate a situation and see what was right, and to see what was not right, to learn from it, so that we don't make again another mistake. So my brother, my sister, first of all, let us run to the Lord and speak to him like a friend when things are okay, but also when things are not okay. Let us run to the Lord. He will illumine us. He will illumine us with his spirit. He will tell us how to handle situations peacefully, amicably, not with a lot of confusions. Sometimes when we're in confusion, we don't know how to go about things. That's why we have to first run to the Lord. Then we run to others so to us to get also good, beautiful advice from others. And then that helps us to be in touch with ourselves. And when we are in touch with ourselves, we are in touch with everyone. The Lord says, come to me. You know, it's like a father who wants to heal the, the who wants to give the best to the child. But the child doesn't want to take that which the father is giving. The father with his experience knows that this is good for the child. But the child with his little experience feels like the father doesn't love me. Okay, it's like, a, just give a simple example. Somebody's having a little bit of... <clears throat> eh? And then the father or the mother says, mother says, please, there is some ginger here. No, it is bitter. No, it is not good. It's not sweet. Yes, the mother knows that by taking that ginger... It will help to clear up the voice and it is an antibiotic which will really help you with all the stuff that you are having into your throat and into your nose. It will bring your health back. But for me, I look at the ginger as only ginger. And yet, that is where I can learn from my father. He's commanding me for the good. So the Lord says, come to me. My brother, the father loves us so much that he's saying, come to me. Let us always go to him. In good times, in challenging times, in bad times let us always go to the lord let us not only wait when things are not okay and then we run to the lord or when things are okay and then we run to the lord no the lord says 
bless we are invited to bless the lord at all times to pray to the lord at all times the lord invites us to pray to the lord at all times meaning when i'm working i have to stop a bit and tell god how my work is going on even in a few moments of my 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 connection with god i say lord thank you for giving me this work now things the way i see them they are not going on well i say help me or the way i see things they are going on very well and i thank you very well i did something i did not expect Thank you, Lord. That, and then life goes on. And then I continue with my work. That is the invitation, my brother, my sister, that we are to come to the Lord at all times and tell him what we are going through so that we are not alone. And he says, take my yoke and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble of heart. <laughs> yeah, take my yoke. You know, there were many commandments and now these commandments became into ten commandments, which are the beautiful commandments, and they remain ten commandments. But with the coming of Jesus, he simplifies them into two, love of God and love of neighbor. He says, you want to love God? Love the neighbor. Because how can you love the God you don't see and you hate the neighbor you see? First, love your neighbor because the neighbor is created in the image and likeness of God. So Jesus simplified the commandments by inviting us to love our neighbor the way we love ourselves and to love God with all our heart, with all our strength, with all our everything. So the commandments of Jesus simplified. That is the yoke which Jesus simplified. He took upon our, himself all our sins. That is what it means to be a follower of Christ, to take upon all the struggles of our family, all the struggles of our brothers and sisters, and say, I will do what I, be, uh, what I can to sacrifice so that others can live. But Jesus took everything for us. As we continue also doing our best, because we are the physical representatives of Christ on earth, as we continue bringing healing to the world wherever we are, let us remember that the Lord took up our sins. He took up our everything, our challenges, our struggles. That's why we have to always learn to him and say, you, Lord, who took over our everything, who took over our sins, our struggles, our challenges, encourage us, show us the way in this situation that we feel there is no way out. Show us the way. Give us the courage. Show us the light. And the Lord, who is a master of everything, will always speak to our hearts, will always speak to us through others, will always speak to us through the circumstances that are around us, which are good and sometimes also which are challenging. The Lord will always speak to us if we run to him, if we come to him and we learn from him. But the key aspect here is to be humble, meek and gentle. Not to be full of ourselves. A person who is humble is simple, is open-hearted. He welcomes God and welcomes everyone as he or she is. A person who is humble is a person who knows he himself or herself. He knows that I'm a human person with my strength, but with my challenges and weaknesses. He knows that God is God. And he knows that others are others as they are. And I don't pretend to be them and they don't pretend to be me. And even if others shout at me, I know that you are you. I am me. A person who is humble is one who knows him or herself and knows how to work out everything to be good and to embrace everyone as he is. A person who is humble is the one who is able to allow Jesus to work through him, to learn from the Lord. And what I would learn from the Lord? We learn from the Lord how to love as he loves, how to speak as he speaks, how to forgive as he forgives, how to embrace everyone as he or she is, just as Jesus embraced everyone without discrimination. How to be merciful without getting tired. This is a person who is humble, who is, whose heart is open, who understands others. Love is gentle, kind. Is, love is so patient. Who is patient? A person who is humble is a person who knows that others can make mistakes and continues to see how to help them and how to continue forgiving them even without getting tired. That's a person who is humble. He knows himself and he does not pretend to be that which is not. My brother, my sister, do I sometimes pretend to be that which I'm not? I am me and I'm original. And the Lord created me to share my originalness to others, but also to respect others' originalness <laughs> and to embrace them and to see what I can learn from others' originalness and what I can kick off and what I can correct in others' originalness with respect. 
it's normal that we are different. And each one of us is invited to share our differences with others, our uniqueness with others, our gifts that I have and that you don't have. Learn from me, for I am meek and humble from the Lord. And when we don't know how to act in life, the Lord says, learn from me. And in order to learn from him, we have to listen to his word, to listen to our heart, to listen to every event of every situation that happens around us. To listen to that voice that is speaking to us, to continue doing good no matter what happens to us in life. To listen to God, to listen to our heart, to listen to others, to listen to every situation. And to be open to see the good things to learn from and the bad things to kick away from. That's the beautiful invitation of the Lord, dear brothers and sisters, to come to him, to run to him first, to tell him what he already knows so that we work out everything alone. We don't feel alone. He's inviting us to go to him as a father, as a brother, as a teacher, as a friend, so that we can be welcomed and we don't feel alone. In life, we, we have the father in life we have brothers and sisters in life we have people around us because god works through others let us embrace all of them eh, and see what we can learn and how we can journey together the lord doesn't want us to journey alone he wants us to journey with others my brother my sister when you journey alone life becomes long and becomes heavy and becomes difficult the lord says come to me learn from me for I am gentle and humble of heart. This is a beautiful invitation, my brother, my sister, who is weary, who is broken hearted, who doesn't feel any way to, who doesn't feel any, any aspect of, who doesn't feel like there's a way out. The Lord says, there is always a way out. Come to me, just come to me, and you find that way out. That is the beautiful aspect of, of life. That we work out everything with the Lord. We run to him. He says, come. If the Lord says, come, go. My brother, my sister, go. Don't pretend to solve things alone. You will knock your head. And the, the, the knock will be so heavy. It will be so heavy, the knock. Work out everything with the Lord. And with each other. That is the best gift we can give to each other. And that's when we realize that our way of living every day is light. We are light. We are light. We journey light because the Lord is with us. We journey light because we are with others. We journey light because we have actually entrusted everything with the Lord and we're working out everything to the Lord. And the Lord wants us to be light, to be, to be calm in our awareness, in our brokenness. The Lord wants to make us whole again. He wants to heal us. He wants to make us beautiful again. Blessings from Jerusalem, dear friends.